good to go. All right, welcome everybody. Um, this is the last uh, open ed community call for 2020. Uh, I think everybody's going to be glad to see 2020 go. Um, we're going to try to keep this, this meeting fairly short, so um, we'll go ahead and, and get started. So here's the agenda. We're going to have a, a few Menti questions for you. We're going to look at, you know, how things were operating and, and what we did, you know, look at Open Ed uh, 2020 and then what we're going to be doing for 2021, um, some, some general feedback, and then what we're going to do for next steps. And so we do have a mentee that we're going to set up for you. And so that code, if you want to go ahead and sign up, uh, 4372419. And we'll drop that into the chat here as well. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the questions. I soon give people a minute to, to log that on. And we're going to turn this over to Tiffany to walk us through the mentee questions. Woo. So um, I don't know how many people are here, but I know we saw some uh, some uh, uh, thumbs ups earlier. But um, to start us off, some people are already answering. Um, where are you joining us from? Um, put in your U.S. state, your Canadian province, or your country. Nova Scotia. Switzerland, Egypt. We have some uh, uh, some countries in here. I actually was not expecting, which is kind of cool. Yeah, thanks for staying up late. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. Okay, and um, to settle the debate of Open Ed Twenty, how do you like your Cheetos? Crunchy or puffy? Personally, I don't. I, I think we need about twenty more answers, answer options for this, so we can all just pick which uh, uh, version of Cheetos. There's so many different kinds, but yes, the real important questions. So far, crunchy is winning. I think crunchy. I think crunchy is going to be the uh, the winner. Um, Personally, I like hot lime crunchy Cheetos. Yeah. Puffy is actually the correct answer, according to <laughs> the meter. Well, I disagree. <laughs> Um, okay, and finally, what is your, this isn't the end of the, the presentation, of course, but um, uh, what is your favorite memory or takeaway from Open Ed 20? There's so much going on. Real collaboration, yes. The early show, the early show was fun. Social justice track. The real open education was the friends you made along the way. Oh, I love that. Opportunities to build community, learning, connecting, the spiral journal activity at the end. I don't, I don't even remember that, um, but it sounds cool. So maybe I'll have to go back and look at it. The tea time. The tea time, okay. Um, the Cheeto debate was a really wonderful way to build community, we agree yoga, uh, lots of connection, community. We are resilient. Disco Ed was cool. Among Us. The care equity grid from Maha and Mia's plenary. Where, where is that? They're moving too fast. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much here. Progressive stacking to build inclusivity in virtual settings. Advocacy push afterwards. The wine tasting. <laughs> Keynotes. Virtual spaces. 
I just realized when I read Disco Ed earlier, it was supposed to be Discord. Sorry. It took me a minute to realize that. <laughs> My bad. Maybe we should think about a disco ed for next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm i sorry. I don't remember who I'm supposed to pass this to. Me. Okay. I pass it to Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just uh, uh, to make sure everybody's sort of in the loop about what's going on on the uh, Oh yes, Stacy. The Discord joke has been <laughs> um, is perfect and very true. <laughs> we can stick OER in anything. <laughs> so uh, we do want to provide some operational updates just on general conference operations. Uh, so uh, uh, from the the four organizations that have been supporting the conference and the operations team. Uh, just to quickly wrap up a couple of things for the 2020 conference, uh, we um, obviously the conference has now come and gone. Uh, it happened on November 9th through 13th. Uh, all of the recordings from sessions have been posted on uh, YouTube is unlisted videos and uh, the recordings are linked out of Sketch for your logged in account uh, that's associated with your registration. Um, once we finish uh, resolving a few issues around captioning and uh, uh, speakers, uh, we will be releasing all of those videos publicly uh, at some point in the new year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, part of the whole idea of an open conference is making it available to the to the whole world. And, and we know a lot of people have been really interested in, in sort of sharing out those videos. So more to come on that very soon. Uh, of course, there was an enormous amount of incredibly valuable content generated through the conference, and uh, uh, there have been a number of conversations among the internal teams around how to keep that uh, keep that content uh, being uh, uh, the conversation around that content to continue in, into the future. And uh, members of the the program planning team have stepped up to pilot uh, something that's going to be called uh, open ed conversations, which is picking a couple of pieces of content from the conference and uh, watching it together and then having a conversation around the common theme. Uh, and the first one of those is going to be actually next week on Wednesday, December 16th, led by David Draper and Matt Ruin. So uh, that's going to be just an exciting opportunity uh, to engage in those conversations and, and uh, uh, happy to share uh, the link in the chat on how to register for that. So uh, that is sort of the wrap for 2020 uh, in terms of operations. We'll talk a little bit more about the, the, the outcomes in just a bit. But I'm going to turn it over to MJ to talk a little bit about 2021. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, so hi, everybody. Um, I'm MJ Bishop. I direct the Kerwin Center for Academic Innovation in the University System of Maryland, but um, we've been leading the Maryland Open Source Textbook Initiative out of the Kerwin Center uh, for the last, gosh, now almost seven years. Um, and uh, more recently in collaboration with Maryland Online, the Maryland Association of Community Colleges and the Maryland Independent Colleges and Universities. So. Most is a statewide initiative and we're very excited to, uh, for Nicole to have invited us to consider hosting, however that looks, uh, the uh, 2021 Open Ed Conference. Um, we have decided that uh, next year's conference will continue to be virtual, that that decision has made, been made upfront, so it will be a little easier to plan. Um, but I do want to say that, um, you know, we will remain flexible and, you know, hopefully knock some wood here in my office if, in fact, uh, the vaccine proves to be successful and there's some call for doing a few things at least face to face. Um, I'm able to, to work with all 12 of our campuses and frankly also the 16 community colleges in the state to think about you know, some venues for, for some from some face to face uh, activity, if that's in fact what what uh, you all decide to do as part of the planning. 
Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll call it a we'll call it a hybrid, flexible, open to whatever uh, comes our way. But at least for the time being, beginning with um, looking at planning this as a virtual event. Um, and I'm excited about that because, frankly, I think you all hit it out of the park for this last year. So um, I, I have no qualms about uh, about this being a virtual event in in the fall. Um, as the slide says says uh, dates are to be determined, but you know, obviously we'd still be looking at that October to November timeframe. Um, and the same four partner organizations will be supporting. I don't think Colorado is really going away. I think he's just gonna step into the background like I was last year. Um, and this year uh, will be, Maryland will be much more in the foreground, but of course we'll still have uh, Spark doing the amazing things that they've done to coordinate this and uh, OpenStax facilitating and also uh, really importantly being willing to be the fiscal sponsor of this because uh, you know I, I think I think they're all feeling a lot more confident about next year but this year of course uh, the, the the fact that open stacks was willing to take the chances they did on all of this um, just says an awful lot about that organization and and you know huge thanks to them for that work um, so, you know, I'm a little disappointed that we're not going to be able to treat you all to crab cakes, you all, and um, uh, make sure that there's Old Bay on everything that you eat uh, during your time in Maryland, but we'll figure out some way to do that virtually and compensate you all for that in the end. Nicole, was there anything else you wanted me to cover? Nope, that's perfect. Uh, and the only thing that I will add is that that we've received a number of questions about just sort of what the committee process is going to look like for next year and opportunities to get involved. And uh, we're going to regroup early next year and get a lot more information out to the community about that. And just in the meantime, um, uh, you know, you're, you're all, uh, if, if you're here, <laughs> you're connected with us uh, in some way. So just, uh, you know, watch the email list and then there's a sign up form uh, to make sure that, that you're getting any relevant updates here. And Tiffany, we'll be sure to send recipes on those crab cakes. Make sure that, <laughs> that, that you're doing them, right. doing, doing them the Maryland way. Uh, the <laughs> thing I wanted to be sure to note, uh, just, you know, we feel like we have huge shoes to fill after following Colorado's lead. Um, but I'll say, I think we're also up to the task. So we're looking forward to, to the role that we can play in supporting this work in the in the fall. Thanks so much, MJ. And uh, you know the the idea behind our four organizations coming together to support this conference in uh, early 2020 was really coming out of the fact that at the time uh, there there sort of wasn't going to be an open ed conference uh, if if people didn't uh, step up to organize it and. Uh, you know, our role in that process was to provide a little bit of stability and certainty over uh, the, the 2020 and 2021 years, of course, <laughs> that was before we knew there was going to be a pandemic. Uh, but I, I think that, um, you know, I, I just want to express to you, UMJ and, and, and to our, our colleagues in Colorado and OpenStax, just, uh, you know, how grateful uh, we here at the Spark team have been to, to work together and uh, we're, you know, all certainly committed to making sure that, that next year's conference is successful, but equally committed to uh, continuing to work closely with the community to uh, figure out what happens next after 2021 and making sure that this continues to be a conference that is truly for and by the community. And uh, you know, our, our sort of mission in all of this is to provide the space for those important conversations to happen. So uh, we're counting on everybody who's here and everybody who's not here <laughs> to uh, be part of that process going forward. So, so more to come soon, all right. So now I am going to turn it over to Emily to share back a little bit uh, what we have heard from you all in the, uh, you all, <laughs> in the uh, Open Ed 20 feedback form. Great. Well, we're going to step back in time to June, I think. Oh, no, here we are. So here we are with some nice responses. At the end of the conference, we had a feedback form. One question was, where do you reside? And we had 
89% of respondents in North America, but we were excited. We did have international participation. 4% of respondents were in Asia, 2.5% in Africa, 2% in South America. So while it did remain an overwhelmingly North American audience, we do have participants from all over the world, which is very exciting. Um, let's see, so the next question was, how many times have you attended open ed conferences in previous years? And we had a little over 70% of attendees were very first time attendees, had never attended the conference before. And another about 10% were, this was just their second year, they'd only attended one previous time. So about 80% of our attendees were in their first or second year of attending the conference. And we certainly do think the online format made it possible for many people who had been unable to attend in the past to be able to attend this year. Oh, nice. And so there's an opportunity in the chat to fill out the survey if you attended the conference and had not yet had a chance to fill out the feedback. So now we're stepping back in time to June <laughs> 2020. And we solicited feedback as we were planning the conference. And here were a few of the highlights that we heard. Um, there were there was some um, concern around having keynotes. There was a request to avoid or at least clearly mark vendor presentations. We wanted more diverse representation, including Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Um, a call to elevate voices on the margins, to focus on accessibility of the conference, the importance of inclusive networking and mentoring opportunities, and as well as a call to help newcomers feel welcome. So that's where we were starting. And so these were goals. We wanted to address all of these areas. And now after we have held the conference, here's some of the positive feedback that we received. Um, people were excited about the variety and diversity of programming that we offered. Um, we uh, talked about how there were a lot of people who were able to attend for the first time because of the virtual format. And again, that was pandemic driven. <laughs> that was not, you know, that just um, happened. But I think there have been benefits to come from that virtual format. Many people said that they were surprised at how much they actually enjoyed a virtual conference. And there was general support for the organization, the technology, the way you were able to get into sessions, that sessions were recorded, and appreciation for Discord, the opportunity to connect in that other platform. There was also some more um, negative feedback or areas for growth. Um, people commented about the quantity of programming. It was hard to attend all the sessions. And the scheduling. Um, didn't work for everyone. We definitely had a North American centric schedule. And so the schedule was too early or too late for some. Um, there was a comment that there wasn't much downtime. And so some people were requesting longer breaks. Of course, Zoom fatigue, it's a thing. And we do hear you on that. Um, there were some comments on the frequency of the code of conduct statement. You know, it was read at the beginning of each session. And then a call for more student, international, and Black, Indigenous, people of color voices. So there's more work for us to do as we continue trying to plan a very inclusive conference. And so this is kind of a summation overall. How much would you like to um, encourage your colleagues to attend this conference? How likely are you to recommend it? And we're pleased that fewer than 5% scored um, six or lower. So we really had a very overwhelmingly strong, a lot of tens, right? So that, that was very encouraging for us. And I'm gonna turn this one over to Ethan. Yeah. So one of the questions, you know, that we are super interested in hearing from the community about is the venue and sort of the structure of the conference overall. And so one of the questions we asked in the survey um, was about the, you know, the online versus in-person question and how to navigate that sort of post, post or still uh, mid COVID pandemic. Um, and so I just, I wanted to talk for a second quickly about the responses to this. Um, Emily was talking about some of the tensions in the feedback that we received, right? For some folks, it was too early. For some folks, it was too late. Some folks said it was too many things. Some folks said they wish there was more programming. And, you know, conference planning is very much about threading that needle. And so with a similar question, 
a similar result with this question uh, in terms of comparing in person folks who are interested in it being in person or um, online. The one thing that really stood out to us is that, you know, over 80 percent, you know, almost 90 percent of people wanted a virtual component of the conference. Um, 20 percent of people said it should be exclusively virtual. Um, you know, we had about 70 percent that some had some sort of dual uh, dual existence and a, and a very small number of people who said exclusively in person. Um, I totally get it. I love the in-person conference, but I'm also somebody that's been privileged enough to, to work for an organization that has funding and can send me there. Uh, and I can go, you know, year after year to build those relationships and connections. So um, knowing that travel budgets have been, you know, hit really hard, as somebody just said in the chat, uh, Don said that, um, you know, we are being super mindful of that and conscious of that, obviously, with next year's planning. Um, but we will definitely, you know, this is definitely informing how we look at future years as well. Yes, and as Maha says in the chat, <laughs> nothing should ever be without a virtual option again. Agreed. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, any anyone else on the steering committee have things to add before we uh, about the 2020 feedback before we move on? I think the one thing that that I, I was reflecting on looking at the chat is just uh, how a lot of the critiques are in areas of tension where it's not that there's a right answer and a wrong answer for everybody. It's that there are right answers and wrong and answers for individual people. So, for example, with the schedule some things uh, that are too early for some or too late for others. <laughs> and I think the, the work of conference organizing is, is sort of all about finding the balance that works for as many people as possible and then working on ways to be inclusive of, of sort of everybody else. So we have a lot to think about in terms of how to strike the best balance and uh, the I think one of the biggest things that 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 uh, you know certainly I and I think we have learned through this year is that the best way to do that is by asking people. So uh, you know thank you all for continuing to show up at these meetings and and sharing your input and uh, the conference is so much better for all of the input that everybody gave. So definitely definitely intending to continue that for next year. So I think Haley, it's over to you. Cool. Um, so I'm I'm Haley Babb. I'm a uh, open education coordinator with Spark. So um, I'm not a member of the steering committee, but uh, I am sort of the liaison um, for the future of Open Ed Committee, who has been working um, to uh, well, I guess now that the 2020 conference is over, to I guess really dive into what the long term planning of the conference is going to look like and and how this is gonna take shape um, after 2021. So um, our big focus now is to, I guess, design the strategic planning process. Um, it's gonna be a very in-depth process. Um, so I imagine, you know, it will take uh, some time, but I'm confident that, you know, this team is, is full of, uh, you know, excellent people, experts in the field who will be able to help us do something that's truly inclusive um, and serves the needs of the community as best we can. So. Um, we will be using, you know, some of the feedback that we uh, collected from 2020 and before that, we're certainly going to continue um, getting community feedback throughout the year, you know, whether that be through uh, these monthly calls or, or whatever else we deem um, necessary, but, you know, want to recommit that it's incredibly important to us that the community is at the center of this process. Um, so we'll be doing everything we can to make sure that uh, that model is going to be something that's going to be uh, something that's welcoming of everyone and inclusive of everyone in the community. Um, yeah, so like I said, we'll be reaching out to try and include more voices. Um, the ultimate goal is that after 2021, this will be a, a completely uh, community governed conference and community. So um, really looking forward to see what that's going to look like. I think uh, it's a really, really exciting project to be a part of because 
uh, the possibilities are just endless and we're at such a rare opportunity to be able to shape this um, in a way that you know is is good for all of us so very excited to be a part of this work um, and looking forward to working more with the community to to create something awesome together oh is this me too yep oh okay <laughs> um cool so <laughs> sorry everyone uh, we're exhausted <laughs> <laughs> we're just doing the best we can we're all ready to say goodbye to 2020 <laughs> yeah seriously cool <laughs> um great yeah so this is just uh if you could give us some feedback now we'll start now so how how do you want to be involved in 2021 and um not only in 2021 but beyond what does that look like to you in every single way i can oh i love that me too <laughs> Yeah, this, I feel like this is a hard question because, you know, there's so much. And of course, anybody, it, uh, this isn't going to be linked to your name. So yeah. if you would like to sign up for something specific, please, you know, make sure that you communicate that in a different way. But we just mm -hmm. want to ask, you know, what, what ways do you want to be involved in maybe ways that we're not, we're not thinking about? Mm. Equitable, hospitable virtual meetings. I like that word hospitable. Clapping and cheering. We're going to need lots of that. <laughs> Abstract review. Yeah. yeah, lots of questions about the needs. Like, um, I think we'll we'll have more information on that sort of in the new year, more specific roles that we're recruiting for, but yeah, still working through 2020 content. Me too. There's so much, so much good stuff. Cool. Holding the steering committee accountable to DEI and social justice commitments. Awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. Great, yeah. So I see there are a, a couple of questions in the chat. So one is what, what are some of the needs from, from Michael? I, I think uh, we uh, have a lot of thinking to do about that. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, more, more to come on that, but we also just wanted to ask the question of, of uh, how you wanna contribute. So this is the other side of that. And Maya uh, also asked the question about, um, is there an opportunity for the community to be able to pose questions in meetings like this? And like, yeah, that's a great suggestion. And maybe there's like a form or a structured process for doing that. Thanks. Cool. So yeah, our next question. Uh, I really like this question. What's one resolution that you're setting for your open education work in 2021? I think there's been a very overarching theme of kind of like, you know, reestablishing and publishing. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, it's, it's an opportunity for all of us, I guess, to take inventory of our work and, and be intentional in, in how we go about it. So this is something that uh, I'm definitely going to be thinking about over the next little while. Self-care, conserving energy, advocacy. Ooh, a student union open ed policy. Love that. Getting more involved with the conference, more adoption at my institution, more community engagement, student connection, equity. Certainly. It's fantastic. Structuring my program and positioning it for accountability. Okay. And apologies, I think this was set so you can only submit once. <laughs> that wasn't oh. our intent. So if you have something else to say, feel free to put it in the chat. Mm 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the self-care, yeah, especially if, if, <laughs> if, if next year is anything like this year, which hopefully it's not, but you know, I, it's been a good lesson for me in conserving my energy, that's for sure. move on yeah <laughs> so to wrap cool. us up i think we're over to winnie yes can you hear me okay yep awesome so uh we are hosting a holiday party this year i'm actually so excited for it because i couldn't play among us or trivia at the actual conference so i'm really excited to play uh, some games with the whole group this conference. So we'll be doing a holiday party on Thursday next week, December 17th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, we will also be doing a treats uh, kind of competition. So you can bring your own homemade treats and show everyone, um, give a 30 second spiel and enter in for a chance to win uh, some open ed merch and swag. So bring your homemade treats we'll have lots of games there and breakout rooms ethan will be leading among us uh tiffany will be leading just general games so we, we have some of those planned as well uh, and i believe tina will be leading trivia so it will be a lot of fun oh my gosh cheeto bingo yes cheeto bingo um so please join to register i'll put the link in the chat Cool. All right. And then I just stuck a link in the chat to the uh, participate page on the Open Education Conference website. And we'll, we're going to be good about posting uh, upcoming events there and uh, including information on time zones uh, and how to register. So in addition to finding this, uh, you can find other information there as well. So I think that is all we had for today. Uh, I think we just want to remind everybody to uh, connect with us on, on social media. Uh, and I think we all can agree on saying goodbye to 2020. <laughs> it was quite a year. Uh, and um, just, you know, I think uh, continue to be grateful of how members of the open education field more broadly came together to support uh, the convening that happened and, and to see all of the energy and excitement about what's going forward. I, I think you can probably tell by how this meeting has gone. <laughs> We're all ready to go for holiday break. Uh, and just, uh, you know, grateful to all of you for showing up and continuing to be part of this and, and, and please do continue and stay tuned for more next year. So yeah, sleep. So yeah, any, Amy, uh, Lee, anything else to share in closing? Having trouble finding the unmute key. <laughs> um, just, we, we, we feel so privileged to be part of this community and the, the, the conference just underscored all the things that, that I love about being part of this community and I'm really looking forward to a merry break mess. <laughs> Very nice. All right, well, <laughs> please join me in saying goodbye 2020. <laughs> we'll see you uh, officially in 2021, but uh, do come to the holiday party and open ed conversations next week. It it'll be fun. <laughs>